this is Mary Humphrey of Mary Humphrey Coaching. Today we're talking about empaths. How empaths are often in relationship with narcissists and why. I'm going to read to you the definition of an empath from Merriam Webster. One who experiences the emotions of others, I agree with that totally, or a person who has empathy for others, I agree with that as well. I do think there's more to this. Um, an empath will pick up on the emotions and the feelings of others. An empath often, often absorbs those emotions and feelings before they know what is going on. And we'll get into that a little bit later. Some descriptions of empaths do include a degree of paranormal. I don't absolutely agree with that. I am an empath and I don't believe that I have paranormal um, abilities. Um, I do have extremely strong intuition and I do pick up in emotions and thoughts. And I can do that as weird as this sounds. I can do it from a picture. I can do it from um, a person that I've met on the street. It could be facial expressions in that picture, by the way. I don't think it's paranormal. So I agree with most of these abilities. I just don't believe it is paranormal. I believe that it's a gift. I believe it's an ability, but not paranormal. Empaths easily absorb the feelings and the emotions that they get from others. This can become dangerous unless you've matured with this uh, gift with this ability to block some of it. Um, you know, it's okay to feel what you're feeling momentarily. It's okay to use it as intuition. But when you absorb it, there ha you have to set a degree of a boundary up to where it's how they're feeling. It's not how I'm feeling. They own that. I don't own that. Empaths can look sensitive and they are sensitive in many ways. Unless they have the ability, and this is work, to change the trajectory of those emotions and those feelings. Where do you store them? Do you store them? Do you let them roll off your back? Do you use them for good? Or do you allow them to um, change your day-to-day -day life? And that's where the uh, the difference comes in. Do you, do you um, use it maturely? Or do you allow it to wreck your life? Empaths are loaded with intuition. They typically have intense gut feelings about other people. And this isn't um, a sort of thing where you're judgmental. It's just an intuition of the reality of people. It can be a reality of a stranger. It can be a reality of something that's going on. You're, you have an intuition of what's going on with the person. The intuition is a wonderful tool. Um, for walking through your life emotionally and socially, but um, it can also be a really good tool to save yourself from tragic situations, which I've actually had happen with me um, on several occasions that I've been intuitive to the point where I've seen into, wow, there's something really dangerous here in this mind. And I've actually protected myself from that and kept myself from situations that actually went very tragic in the end. And so I really, really enjoy and very interested in learning as much as I can about the empath, about intuition. And it's not paranormal. I, I can't say that enough. Empaths are often introverted. We're not afraid to meet a stranger. We're great huggers. We love knowing that people are okay. We love knowing that people are doing well. We can enthusiastically go out and greet people. But once the small talk lingers, once the conversation gets long, once the party carries on too long, we tire out. We have to go home. We have to recharge our batteries. We have to emotionally recharge ourselves. Now, if you compare this to an extrovert, an extrovert becomes drained when they don't have that social input. But an extrovert will, they will recognize when they need that social intervention. And an introvert recognizes when they need the social, social intervention that's a gap. Let me go home and recharge. And an introvert may, sometimes when they're making decisions, 
such they're in a meeting with a supervisor or in a, in a corporate meeting and they, they become overwhelmed with the social situation in this meeting. They also are great thinkers. So a great tool for them, give me a few minutes alone, give me, give me whatever time it takes with no pressure and I will come back with, at you with some great ideas. Just give me time. Empaths are direct targets to narcissists because empaths have huge hearts. A vulnerable empath may feel starved for a trusting relationship. This may lead the empath to absorb a narcissist's initial love bombing. The love bombing may consume the empath to the point where they are overwhelmed and they aren't able to think things through. It is just a lot. They're not getting away from the narcissist because there's all of this love bombing going on in their life and it's consuming them. And there is a level of um, incomprehension in this um, because the uh, empath uh, needs to think alone. They need, generally as an introvert, they need the time alone. But here's all of this love bombing that feels like it's filling their needs. But what it's actually doing is just mixing the pot to where there's confusion. And the empath is, isn't even aware of this as it's happening. So once the empath picks up on the stark reality of the cold front from the narcissist, it can be so hurtful. It can, it can just be devastating when the empath realizes that the emotions and the feelings that are um, emulating from the narcissist is just cold and it's actually stunning. How does an empath heal from an emotionally draining relationship or an emotionally abusive relationship? To stay in this dysfunctional relationship, the choice is to stay. It may involve some therapy for the empath. It may involve some counseling. It can involve some coaching. Coaching though is not therapy. So one of the first steps to healing is mindset and mindfulness. Recognize when the narcissist's emotions and feelings are invading your space and your thoughts. So you have to have a recognition. You have to be in a mindset of, hmm, where am I and how is this pain invading my thoughts? Recognize when your heart is breaking or when you feel completely drained. Remember, you must spiritually and mentally take care of you. You have to do this yourself. Recognize that you believe and know that you're worthy and that you deserve to be loved. Look into yourself. What feelings of your own are you sweeping under the rug? What are you not allowing in your life that you as a human innately deserve and need? It isn't a matter of putting you first always, but what do you need? You have to take care of you. Are you trying to fulfill your need for a loving relationship by staying in a relationship with a narcissist who may be more interested in controlling you or fulfilling their own needs? Are you trying to do everything right in your life so that you protect the narcissist emotionally and foundationally? So that they respect you more in life and but even though this narcissist is not emotionally available to you i have one big question for you are you honoring your needs today as an empath are you taking care of you are you allowing yourself time to think by yourself are you allowing yourself the time to construct and gather your thoughts and legitimately think through your life. Are you setting limits and boundaries with the narcissist? And it helps you protect, helps to protect you from the weight of the whole entire relationship. It's a very weighty thing. It's a weight on your shoulders. It's weight on your mind. It's weight on your mental health. It's an onslaught, of manipulative attempts usually from the narcissist. Again, I can't say this enough. Remember, you must take care of you. Just remember, unlike the young children in life, nobody's responsible for taking care of you but you. So you need to do that. You need to take care of you. There's nothing wrong with taking care of you. In an emotionally charged relationship, 
you may have to take the upper hand and this is a mental upper hand and this is a hand to take care of yourself this is a hand that says i'll let this person get under my skin you have to protect your own mental well-being in an emotionally charged relationship so i hope this discussion has helped you today regarding empaths and narcissism and i hope it has helped you to understand if you're in any of these situations or if this sounds like you i hope it has helped please make sure you get out there and um, you speak with someone in your support group if you need to that means that you speak with someone that you know that you can trust someone that has your back someone that loves you unconditionally speak with a coach and if you need um, professional help get out there and get therapy and get out there and get counseling there is nothing at all wrong with that there's nothing at all wrong with taking care of you 